الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome to a new episode Yet not the first nor the last On the discussion of marriage And we dealt in the last episode With a few critical points In regards to what to look for When trying to find the spouse Or the person whom you intend to spend The rest of your life with If Allah wills that and I believe that there are some many other qualities which we have not had the chance to address. So why don't we begin with the most relevant one uh, to the previous topic. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa mahtadi wa hudahu wa ba'du. The Prophet والسلام, was asked, as in the hadith of Ma'qal ibn Yasar, may Allah be pleased with him, a man approached him and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I found a beautiful woman of good lineage, but she does not bear children, she does not conceive. So can I marry her? And the Prophet said, no. And we spoke about this hadith before. And the man repeated the question twice and thrice. And the Prophet continues to give a negative reply. And then he said, O oh people, marry the one who is loving, caring, and fertile. For I will be proud with you or by you on the day of judgment. I will boast of your numbers and be proud of that on the day of judgment. So. Here the Prophet is mentioning two qualities that one should look in a woman. She has to be loving, caring, and she has to be fertile. Now for loving and caring, this has nothing to do with religion, right? In the sense that it doesn't have to do with her religious commitment. So the personality comes here and it is manifested in her being loving and caring. I remember one of my daughters, may Allah bless her soul, she was the most loving and caring of my children to the extent that when she was young even when she was 17 years of age she was once responsible for a school gathering and there was this child that lost his mother it was about like three four years of age and the child was crying my daughter stood next to the child crying with her look because she couldn't take it a woman saw my daughter doing this and she immediately came and proposed for her son. She said, this is a quality and I need in my daughter-in-law. Of course, needless to say, my, my daughter, alhamdulillah, is half of and she is a uh, student of, of knowledge and she's uh, all of this. Thing. And she's married, mashallah, billah, and she is taking care of her children, of her husband, and they love each other. This is one of the qualities. So you should thoroughly investigate whether you're marrying a sister or a sister is being proposed to by a brother. Both have to investigate thoroughly these little things that people usually neglect because, no, I want someone who is only religious and I don't care about anything else. Or I want someone who's only beautiful. You know, the topic of the, of the fertility, I don't, I don't want to go down there, but just, uh, just a point about that because then that's something very sensitive to the sisters. Right? And it's not in her hands. That's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think maybe if you can clarify, you know, put some context behind, does that mean that if a woman's not fertile, that khalas, that, you know, men should avoid her and stuff like that? It's very the, uh, we, sensitive. This uh, point was addressed actually before. But here what the Prophet sallallahu is saying, that he said, Tazawwaju al-walud al So first of all, this is the prophetic advice. What should we do? Take it or leave it. That's number one. I'm talking to the Muslim. This is a piece of advice from Rahmatan lil Alameen, from the one who is mercy for mankind. So he's telling you, do this. You, he's giving you a piece. Of, no, yeah. I, I got your point. I'm elaborating this. He is saying, those who are prolific. And he mentioned why. He mentioned that I want your number, I want you to outnumber the other nations on the day of resurrection. So this is a wish from the Prophet Sallallahu needs to be fulfilled. And anyone loves the Prophet Sallallahu he loves also to fulfill the Prophet's wish. So the scholars, they address this issue. How can I know that she is going to be prolific, as you mentioned? She's a virgin. She is not married before. 
So they said here, heredity plays vital role sometimes. If you see her mother, if you see her sisters, if you see, uh, mashallah, all of them they had children, which is, this is very important. Sometimes it is there in the gene of the family. They don't bear children. It is there. And you want to have children. So you saw her, her sisters, mashallah, they have many children. So most probably, okay, there are exceptions, most probably she is going to be like them. So that's how you figure out that she is going to be, inshallah, prolific and giving children, etc. And the wadud, which is this wid, wid actually it is this affection and love, which is really very important ingredient for the marital life, the love. I believe that uh, Shah Muhammad was, uh, was thinking from the other point of view, which is, okay, if I'm not fertile, if a woman, I don't conceive, I was married once or twice, and I, Allah Azza wa Jal willed it that I don't have children. Does this mean that I'll stay and remain unmarried forever? No, no, it didn't mean that, because let's say that a man, mashallah, has many children, and now he's looking for a peace of mind, okay? He's always having headache at home, okay? He has a lot of children. So he can marry a sister who is barren. What's wrong with that? If you also, if you look at the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, Khadija radiallahu had the children, but so many of their women, they didn't have children as well. I mean, Allah says in the Quran, وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا I mean, it's a test. Everybody gets tested in their own way. And of course, we feel with the sisters who may be barren, uh, yet that would be her test in life. And for others, their children are the test in life. It's a fitna for, for the family. So. I mean, we, the mercy of Allah is there for those with children and those without children. But we have to bear in mind that the objective and goal of marriage in Islam is to have children. Children. That is one of the objectives of the marriage in Islam in the first place. Other qualities uh, which we should look for. Well, a number of qualities were mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet I remember something, may I? Yes, definitely. Okay, exactly. Khair. The, the man who came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, I proposed a woman from among the Ansar. He said, did you see her? He said, go and have a look. Because the Ansar, they have problems with their, which means the look here is important. Okay, go and look and see that maybe she has a problem with her eye, then this is going to affect your marital life later on. So from the beginning, go and choose the partner that you feel that, that's why the Prophet Sallallahu he said, among the, the qualities of the woman, and, and this is the hadith that I was just going to quote. Okay. So you elaborate on yeah. the hadith. It's, it's not elaboration. The hadith is crystal clear. The Prophet was asked which women are the best. And the Prophet summarized it by saying, it is the woman who, when you look at her, pleases you. And when you address her or instruct her, she obeys you. And when you leave her or travel away, she preserves you and your absence and herself and in your wealth. The first is that pleases you when you look at her. This doesn't mean that she has to be a, not a bombshell. This doesn't mean that she has to be Miss Universe. On the contrary, even Miss Universe in three, four days, once you are acquainted with her, she becomes like anyone else. Even if you go to uh, leaders and heads of states, who had beautiful wives, yet they did not feel that this beauty prevents them from cheating with an intern with a cigar or with whatever. So beauty is not as we see it. You can, uh, every, uh, this is my, my conviction, every woman is beautiful. Every single woman is beautiful regardless of what you may think. But it depends on the angle, how you look at her. Yeah, you may ma get married to someone who is very regular or low on the scale of, in matters of beauty. But mashallah, she takes care of herself. She has a beautiful smile that comforts you. And this is what is meant in the hadith. When you look at her, she pleases you. She's always taking care of herself, wearing nice clothes, even if she's not beautiful. But she has the, the spirit of a beautiful woman. Secondly, she obeys you when you instruct her. And this obedience is essential. And I know that probably in the West, there are two captains of the boat. And we'll it will sink. This may not Who go... Who said it sinks? Nowadays, there's, there's only one captain, but it, <laughs> it's not the man anymore.
I, I wanted to give some advice for the, because I know we're doing these, these uh, programs focused on, you know, the male and, and looking to get married, inshallah ta'ala. Um, later on, we're going to talk about the female, just so the sisters know that this is not just all attack. No, no, there's, no, no, there's something, yes, a, rem with us. Sure. a reminder I want to give to the brothers, and that is that a lot of their um, images of beauty that they see on the magazines and whatnot is not actually a real human being. Photoshop. So, yes, photoshopped, as they say, and, and manipulated. So that woman that they see in the magazine doesn't exist. And it's very hard for them to, to let this go. So then when they go to the sister uh, to get married, he sees an unphotoshopped uh, version, and then he can't find his ideal mate. And I just want to remind the brothers that yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, to not make those standards. I have a sort of uh, a rule for the brothers looking to get married. I say, brother, listen, it's like this. You know, if you, when you go to see the sister, and what you need to think is, you know, is this someone I can look at? You know, mashallah, she's, you know, pleasing to my eye. And it's like, I went to see a sister once. Especially you know? when you wake up. I went to, no, this is exactly, actually, that's the, if you wake up in the morning next to her, it's like, alhamdulillah, you know, you can see yeah, it's not that. <laughs> Inshallah ta'ala, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. A way of life, a way of life. Oh. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik every Sunday to Friday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. A way of life, a way of life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, welcome back. As I had assumed, and I don't know the unseen either, there's anyone here, but what you were going to say was going to bring about some replies, and so... It may not happen that the girl looks, ends up looking like her mother. Um, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But I think the point being is that I think we'll agree that brothers, we also mentioned this previously, have a very high expectation that's based upon a totally artificial concept of beauty that doesn't actually exist. Brothers need to get real about, you know, the, the sister you're marrying as a real human being, have a realistic expectation. 
if she's pleasant to you, alhamdulillah, that's enough. You know, if, I mean, if she fits those criteria and she's got deen and she's loving and she's, you know, this a brother said to me, okay, I, there's this sister, mashallah. She has all the good qualities in the deen. You know, she's, uh, this sister's fantastic. I, I'd love to marry a sister like that. She just doesn't look nice to me. I'm saying, what's wrong? No, no, I need someone to look like, and he mentioned a particular movie star. I said, you know, brother, I'll tell you what. I said, okay, I, I can almost guarantee you, if I bought this movie star in front of you with hijab, yeah, without her makeup and her lights and cameras and action, yeah, and I said, mashallah, is a sister for you? He said, no, no, she's not really good enough. Because if you saw her in the real flesh, you'd probably think, no, no, this is not what I want. And this is the, it's a real problem until now the brother's not married. You know, it's a, it's a real issue. You know, subhanAllah, this just reminded me now about a piece of advice I was giving from Abdullah ibn Umar to his son. He said, you want to marry a woman, just think with the way when she gets up, the, how she would look in the morning. She gets up. So in other words, you should not be deceived by these looks when you, when you see them. And you, we mentioned that among the qualities that obedience to the husband. And unfortunately, we are living in a time that something had, had happened to the Muslims mentality or mindset. It's modernism. Okay. It being invaded so that a woman looks that obeying the husband, I'm not her slave. They receive it or this is how they conceive it. Here I would like to share with my sisters in particular and the brothers one of the beautiful hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu when he said, إِذَا صَلَّتِ الْمَرْأَةُ خَمْسَهَا وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا وَأَطَاعَتْ وَأَحْسَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا وَأَحْسَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا وَأَطَاعَتْ بَعْلَهَا قِيلَ لَهَا دْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ مِنْ أَيَّ أَبْوَابِهَا شِئْتِي This is a beautiful hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu is saying that when a woman prays the five prayers, which is the minimum requirements, okay? The five prayers. And fasts Ramadan. And protects herself, maintains her chastity, and fourth, obeys her husband. What's the reward? It will be said to her on the day of resurrection, on the day of al Qiyamah, enter the Jannah, enter the Jannah, through any one of the eight gates, subhanAllah. That's the privilege of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Yes, it's not this, it's not for the men, it is for the women. All the gates are telling her, come, you can enter through this gate. So obeying your husband, you are obeying Allah. This is how you look to it. It is an act of ibadah. You are getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the one who told you to obey your husband is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the tongue of his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And the obedience, obedience has to be governed. Huh? Of course, you know, within. I, I've seen, uh, there's a brother, and inshallah he's married now, but he had the big long criteria. The whole list that we're going through, he had the whole list. Maybe you shared it with him before. So he goes around giving the list to everybody. And, uh, and he tells brothers, you know, tell your wife if you've seen this person before. Like a woman like this. So one sister, she says, oh, I know a sister like this. And she said, yeah, mashallah. And then what's her name? She said, she's called Hur al Ain. <laughs> and then another brother said, because it's like, you don't find a woman with all of this. Another brother said, I did find this woman. He said, but when I went and found out, she was looking for a prophet in return. <laughs> because a lot of brothers, they delude themselves. They have the list, this is cute. they have the list, but they're losers. And we say she should obey the husband. Sometimes this guy's mentality, it's like he's not even like, he doesn't have rush. He doesn't have his guidance and what is he actually doing? And I've seen this in the West, that a lot of the men need to um, step up and be more ma manly and actually know how to drive and move things forward. So I think the issue is a lot more complex than just telling the women, just listen to whatever your husband says. No, it doesn't mean that. Yeah. We are telling this, uh, brothers, this takes us back to uh, square one. We are saying obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding your husband. We are going to talk about the sisters and the rights of the sisters and that the brother is Sometimes they, maybe they have memorized only this particular hadith. They know it. The hadith about the rights of the women, they don't know them. So here we are trying to teach our sisters and brothers and educate them and give everyone his due right. And I think for all the sisters, I mean, I think really, you know, the sisters out there listening,
This is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is not the Prophet. This is not someone speaking from his desires. Yes. This is not someone coming up with philosophy. This is not someone you know who's done some you know psychological study that needs still needs verification. No, this is knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa taala. And I think the important thing here is for a sister listening to think. Okay, what can I learn from this? Number one, it's important to look beautiful to for my husband. So Allah is telling, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling, in the women. Yes, he's saying men look for this and this. But it's also a message for the sisters. It's a message for them. Look, this is how the man is. Look, this is how the man is. He's like this. So they should know that you know it's important to your husband that you look beautiful and that when he sees you, he's pleased. So do your best to be like that. Why obey the husband? This is something important. It's interesting in the West that there are many men looking for women from. The Philippines, from East Asia. Why? Why? If you look at the thing, it's because they are so they just can't handle the modern Western woman who you know who wears the pants, as they say, right? They're looking for someone who is you know who is exactly she you know she has those meek qualities and so I think that there's something important. It tells us something about the nature of the man as well and the importance of. You know, they always talk about the male ego. Yes, the male has an ego. What's wrong with if you pander to it a little bit? Let him have his uh, say and let him listen to what he has to say. That's important to him. That's what gives a man significance. That's how a, ma a man gets significance in that way. So, alhamdulillah, give him that space. You know, and giving that space is all part of not only pleasing your husband. But actually, in many ways, it, it helps to make society a much more restful place. Of and this course, is the very, husband has to be just. many important dimensions to he this. He has to be yeah. just. He, he shouldn't become of a course. dictator and take advantage. And, of and you role. don't obey him in disobedience to Allah. Yeah, but I, I, I want to put yeah. a point in just uh, yeah. you know just the statement when we say the hadith is clear or remember who said this hadith. It's a little misleading because we take the Quran as a whole and we take the Sunnah as a whole. We put it together. So if somebody just takes one hadith and says the hadith is clear, I'm, like that's almost like a sign of ignorance. Because if it's like if you have a deck of cards, somebody says, oh, I know this is like I got this. You have to see everything. You have to see the whole picture. See, brother Muhammad, this then takes us to the beginning, which is we are saying that we are Muslims. Yeah, I always take you back to the beginning. Okay, this is that we are Muslims. That's why here we even this point that we took a long time, but it needs actually to be to be clarified. That we are Muslims, okay. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling this. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling this, okay. And He is addressing both men and women. So everyone has to do his part, okay. So because at the end of the day, this life is short, transient. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is going to end this life. We are going to die. We're going to meet Him. So, so it is an act of worship. If you may allow me, and in a nutshell, what you've said is correct. 100%. You cannot come to a hadith or a verse and extract it out of context and say, this is it. You have to look at the holistic and, picture. And they say it like it's so clear. But, but yes, yes. to be able to say, Akhi, you're not allowed to take this hadith out of context. You have to bring some other evidence to prove that what the hadith was mentioned, all of evidences are correct and authentic. So when we come to the issue of obedience, we have to agree that a woman must obey her husband, but what is the uh, parameters of disobedience? If a husband says to his wife, stand on your right foot for an hour on the corner. Simon says, this is not obedience. No one in Islam would say, yes, sister, you have to obey your husband. You have to stay on your right foot uh, standing up for an hour. No one says this. So what kind of obedience are we looking for? The obedience that falls within the parameters given to the husband. Sheikh, how do you explain the hadith then? Uh, I think it's in uh, Tabarani, and as far as I know, it's an authentic narration. Sheikh Muhammad won't let me take it out of context, he can correct me. Where the, uh, the Prophet wasallam said, if you're, and I don't remember the colors of the mountains, but the Prophet said, if your husband says, climb up the red mountain and go down, and climb up the green mountain and go down, and cl climb up the blue mountain and go down, if you can do it, you should do it. I do not believe it's authentic. I have never heard of it. Well, there's, there are other narrations to that. But, uh, but there is authentic narration, but, uh, which is uh, authentic narration, when a, a woman came. And this shows actually the, the graveness 
of the man's rights upon the woman, really. That his rights are too much upon her. When, just yes, imagine this, and this is, the one who was talking is the Prophet Sallallahu Is a girl came and said, said, O Prophet of Allah, what are the husband's rights? And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if, imagine, he, this is the picture that he, he, he gave her. Tell us the picture and we will elaborate on it, inshallah, in the next episode. That he said if he got wounds all over his body and all these wounds are oozing with pus and she licks all these wounds with her tongue, that will not fulfill the rights of the husband. Did the Prophet Sallallahu meant it? Did he mean it literally? Of course not. No. But what he wants the, the message to teach her, that you try your best. You try your best because in the other hadith, إِنَّمَا هُوَ جَنَّتُكِ وَنَارُكِ He's your heaven and he's your hell. Which means if you please him, and he men should not feel, mashallah, okay, because we are going to balance it when we talk inshallah about the it's, it's in the next episode and I want to just like drop the little point before we go to the next episode and that is that the man is taking these things he's taking these hadith and he's like this is my right yeah, you just give so it to me. So the blame on those brothers whom needs to be educated. To carry on with this discussion in the very next episode Zakumullah khairan for uh, being attentive Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh a way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a complete way. Do you know what Islam says? It says that life's the greatest test. It says that life's a borrowed space, returned upon rest. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life. Oh. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity.